Hello, I'm Catherine Robinson. I'm the secretary of the Friends of the Trap Grounds. We're standing beside the pond that the Friends of the Trap Grounds created in the year 2000, 20 years ago. The trap grounds used to be a rubbish chip. It was an overgrown reed bed and a smelly, abandoned rubbish chip. When we first got involved in about 1995, nobody came here. It was a very unsavoury place. It had been owned by St John's College for about a hundred years and they had just used it as a rubbish chip. The City Council bought it off the college in 1965. Local people carried on fly tipping here. All sorts of unsavoury activities went on. I never came here, I was too respectable. One spring I heard a cuckoo calling here in the reed bed. I decided to investigate and I came and I was amazed by the wealth of wildlife that had just grown up since the rubbish tipping ended. So I got together a few local volunteers and we started dragging tons and tons of rubbish out of a smelly swamp. Since then we've created another five ponds, installed a boardwalk, we've planted trees and we've never stopped since. Water voles are one of the most endangered species of mammal in the country. They're about 97% down in numbers in the last 20-30 years, but we have got a small community of water voles living in the reed bed, swimming across the pond. We've also got frogs, toads, newts, kingfishers, herons, a rare bird called a water rail. There's very few sites in Oxford City where the water rail breeds. It's extremely elusive. In Oxfordshire, altogether, there are 33 known species of dragonfly and damselfly. We've got 21 of them, some of them very rare. And that's not bad for a former rubbish tip. The trap grounds now consists of about 10 acres of reed bed, woodland, streams, ponds and meadows. But it was originally a much bigger area. It was actually part of Port Meadow. I found a map of 1769 of Port Meadow showing a very big area called the trap grounds. And nobody knows the meaning of the name, but I have a theory that it might have been where fish were trapped in channels dug across Port Meadow from the river. In other parts of the country, that um, how it used to be done in the olden days when people ate a lot of fish and when the Thames had salmon and trout in it. Anyway, when the railway was built in 1840, this area got separated from the rest of Port Meadow. That was when St John's College bought it and started using it as a rubbish tip. I'm standing in what we call Polly's Glade, named after one of our very earliest volunteers, Polly Holbrook. She's died now, but she did a huge amount of work here in the early days. So this is Polly's Glade, where local school children come for storytelling sessions and nature study. We encourage that because education is part of our remit. We, we have three functions. The Friends of the Trap Grounds exist for the conservation of the site, education of the public, and recreation. And education can consist of anything from five-year-olds doing storytelling to university graduates doing research projects. And that's good, we encourage that. Yes, one exciting thing that's happened this year is a family of sparrowhawks have nested here in Polly's Glade. Up there, in that tree there, in fact, I can see the nest, you probably can't. A pair of sparrowhawks mated in March and produced four eggs, which hatched, and we've had four fluffy chicks with enormous eyes peering down at us from that nest. They left the nest about two weeks ago. They're still here. You can hear, sometimes you can hear the chicks calling for food. Sparrowhawks, I think, are the only bird of prey that can fly in between trees. 
and you can see them gliding in and out silently. It's very exciting to watch. Well, where I'm standing now, there were plans to build a road right across it, and we fought very hard to uh, save the site for wildlife. And that ended up with us applying to get it registered as a town green. We won our case and made legal history. So this area west of the stream is now a town green, which means it can never be built on. It's protected forever. So we're able to, to get on and manage it, look after it. With the support of the City Council, especially the Parks Department, they don't have the resources in terms of manpower or money to look after all the green spaces in the city. So we raise the money and we provide most of the labour. But the Parks Department gives us expertise and, and really valuable support, which we're very grateful for. Places like the track grounds are so important, I think, for people's mental health as well as physical health. To have a place like this so close to residential areas is a wonderful resource. Parks, recreation grounds, they're good, they do a job, but it's places like this where you can come and be peaceful and observe wildlife that are so precious. During the lockdown we've had a lot more people coming and I, ha I re got this postcard a few days ago from a visitor who says thank you for providing such a beautiful and peaceful refuge in these days of lockdown.